Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting things to talk about, and I'm sure at this point the majority of you already heard the statement that Dennis James made regarding Big Ramy and what happened to him, to his look and to his placement. To sum it up, basically Dennis James says that he was fine when he was in Arizona with him, one week out he looked great, he looked like the best version of himself and he doesn't know what went wrong. Along with this statement, he posted a couple of photos of Big Remy about one week before the Mr. Olympia and before we get to this new statement of Dennis James where he pretty much calls out Chad Nichols, Remy's coach, we're gonna take a look at these photos that were posted and analyze what he looked like actually at one week out and was he really at his absolute best and were there really not any signs that he was gonna be off and that he was injured, uh, the signs of atrophy, all kinds of problems that Big Remy had. So if you take a look at this one photo right here, you can see those bumps in his legs for sure. So that was that was there. It was visible, it was prominent, and it looked like an issue. Other than that, you can also see that his triceps are, especially his left tricep, his arms are smaller. And Dennis never mentioned that. He does look very conditioned. His abs look hard, tight right here. But his calves do look downsized and his forearms look suspiciously small. Dennis posted a bunch of photos, we're gonna check them all out, but this is bad double bicep. Was it obvious here, at this point, that his lower back was uh, missing? I think it was, I think it was. At this point, right here, about one week before the Mr. Olympia, his lower back did seem melted, it was gone. Something was wrong with it, his back overall did not look as good as last year, or as good as eight years ago as you can see right here in this comparison photo 2014 his back looked better it looked good like he still had a little bit weaker lower lower back lower lats but they were at least visible they were prominent you could even see sort of a christmas tree for god's sake now nothing nothing his lats are completely gone it looks like i don't know maybe some kind of nerve damage or an injury that prevented him from training his lats whatever it was his lats were pretty much melted away gone and it looked just the same one week out dennis james forgot to tell us that when he was talking that big ram is bringing his absolute best and now he's trying to convince us that everything was fine it was not fine he was lying to people when he was telling us that big ram is looking as impressive as he was explaining it and that he's bringing his absolute best and aside from those lads you can also see that his triceps and his biceps were definitely down in size it's not like all the poses were horrible, but this one was problematic. You can see the problem with his quads, and you can see that his left arm is significantly smaller. You can see the same thing pretty much in the front lat. In this version of the front lat, looks better. I can say that he looked better overall than he did on stage. So there was something wrong with peaking, for sure. But he did have those issues. Check out the tricep right here, also. Flat, so flat. This is not what Big Remy's arms used to look like. I mean, side tricep looked good, but it also looked decent on stage. Pack, again, was a problem. I don't know how Dennis didn't see it. Or, what is a more likely scenario, why he is lying to us now that he didn't see it then. But overall, I mean, I have to say, Big Grammy did look better one week out than he did on that stage. Something went wrong for sure. What was it? I don't know. Here, in this comment, Dennis James calls out Chad Nichols, Remy's actual coach, and he says... There is a difference between being a coach or being a friend who opens up his door for him to have a stress-free last 2.5 weeks of his prep. Not sure why you're looking to blame me for something I can't control, I don't control. And by the way, what happened? Why don't you tell me? So what Dennis is trying to say here is that he is not Big Ramy's coach. It's not his responsibility to make Ramy look good on stage. He did train him and he helped him out in his house. He let him stay there for two and a half weeks. But let's be honest, guys. Let's be realistic. That's not the only reason why Dennis James is doing this. He's promoting himself by being in Big Ramy's camp. He's training him. So there is some responsibility for sure. 
if not for his final look on that stage, because yeah, he's not controlling all the variables, then for the fact that he was telling us consistently that Big Remy is bringing something that we haven't seen so far, like the best version of Big Remy, that he's gonna be bigger and more conditioned and just perfect, the way he was describing it, which wasn't the case, which did not come true, and so I am holding Dennis James responsible for what he was saying and for his part in preparing Big Remy for this year's Mr. Olympia. What went wrong exactly, we still do not know. We do have a new interview with Big Remy where he was asked this question, what went wrong, why did you place fifth, and here is his reply, check it out. What do you think, what was the problem, like why you are on the fifth place? Uh, I, I, I don't know exactly until now, right now, because I have to ask the judge what's the problem. Oh, okay, you're analyzing. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, because the him opinion is um, very important, mm -hmm. and I have to ask them what the problem why I get this place mm -hmm. and when I will know right away I will try to fix it he says he doesn't know he's unaware of all the issues that his physique had and I described many times what exactly was wrong about his physique why he placed that low and if you guys follow my channel you know the exact reasons but Big Ramy seems to not be able to see that he needs to ask the judges so I guess we won't really get an answer until he asks the judges and if they really explain to him about all the flaws like bumps in the quads, bumps in the glutes, smaller calves, smaller forearms, uh, melted triceps, smaller arms, melted lats, especially in the back double, that's about it, washed out abs as well. If somebody explains this to him, then we might hope for an answer to why, why this occurred, what happened in that one year, was it an injury, was it something else, we still don't know, I hope we will get an answer soon, as soon as we do, I will inform you guys, so stay tuned, subscribe to this channel. Before we get to the news, I wanted to talk about this interesting moment from the Mr. Olympia that nobody is really talking about, uh, the question that I'm wondering here is, why did they do the 212 guys like this? They invited Brian Shaw to give them the awards. No matter who you are, you're gonna look small standing next to Brian Shaw. And if you are a 212 bodybuilder, I mean, these guys are pretty much dwarfs, most of them, especially Sean Clarida, who just won. He's shorter than, like, most, uh, probably all the 212 guys, and he's not even close to 212. I think he's, like, 180, 190 on stage for his weight, for his frame. He looks insane. He looks phenomenal. People are calling him Mini Ronnie Coleman. I can definitely see that. His nickname is the Giant Killer, and I love that. It's a good story. He has beaten some really bigger guys than him, but he looks good. He looks phenomenal when he's alone. When he stands next to other people, you can see how small, how tiny he actually is. Basically, anybody can dwarf Sean Clarida, and they chose the biggest, the strongest man in the world, and one of the biggest strong men in the world to do that. Why? Why? Was this an attempt of trolling the 212 guys? Would they really do something like this? I mean, come on. Are we supposed to believe that the organizers of this event did not have this idea in their mind? They knew very well, just like we all know, that 212 guys are super short and they only look good alone or with one another, not when they are compared to open bodybuilders, regular taller people, and especially not strong men, and one of the biggest and strongest strongmen in the world, uh, Brian Shaw. I don't know why the hell did they do this, it's kind of funny, but I'm curious about the reasoning behind this. Did they do this actually intentionally to troll these guys? I mean, he really made this entire division look silly. Look at this photo, man. Look at this. He's holding them. They look like toys next to him. And they're supposed to be bodybuilders, you know, bodybuilders. They're not even classic physique or men's physique guys. They are a bodybuilding category. So I don't know why the IBB did this. I mean, I did find it funny, but, you know, it's not a good thing. It's not a good look for 212 division. It just made the entire division look silly. I also wanted to show you this because I found it really funny. Uh, Nick Walker doing this uh, classic pose. And somebody, I think Fernando Roy on Instagram page, made this comparison, compared him to uh, the father of classic physique, you can call him uh, Frank Zane, doing this classic pose, looking amazing here, very classic, and being compared to Nick Walker, the mutant, the mass monster, the freak, doing this same pose, and I, I found this very funny, and I gotta say, Nick 
stick to your most muscular and bodybuilding kind of poses this is not for you this is not a good look especially if you're being compared to somebody like frank zane just makes you look that much less aesthetic so stay away from the classic poses do your thing and look at this look at his back double man this is ridiculous he definitely improved his back he definitely gained a ton of muscle and nick walker look at the biceps look how peaky the biceps are man i don't think i ever saw this kind of biceps in a history of bodybuilding show it to me who has peaky biceps like this who has peakier biceps or more peaky biceps i don't think there is anybody with with better bicep peaks anyways other than that look at the glutes and the hamstrings like so much muscle on this physique what a freak nick walker is he's a freak he's a monster he's a mutant and he has no business doing the classic poses and lastly i wanted to talk about neil curry finally deciding to move to the open as you can see he made this post he says this is the end of my classic physique journey i had six amazing years in this division from amateur to a pro six time top 10 placings one time new york pro title and making my dream of competing at a mr olympia reality i can't keep losing muscle and sucking down to 215 to make the weight limit anymore so this will be the last time you will see me in classic physique and it's now time to be brave and make the move into the open bodybuilding i will now allow my body to grow improve and be able to present the best version of my physique to you so he officially decided to switch to the open i don't know if you guys are familiar with neil curry i wasn't sure should i make a video about him because i don't know how popular he actually is but me i'm a fan of fuad abiyar and his podcast and neil was a guest over there i gotta say he definitely has the best british accent out of all the brits uh, and you know he's a he's an interesting guy but he's a classic physique guy and fuad doesn't sponsor classic guys his brand is all about hardcore bodybuilding but he decided to sponsor this guy because he's a hardcore classic physique competitor no more no longer he decided to switch to the open which makes sense really because he is on the bigger side of classic physique and he needs to suffer down a little bit too much to make the weight if you guys followed his progress while he was prepping you notice that he was already in really good shape at like a month or even two months out and then all he did was yeah he lost some body fat but really he lost a lot of muscle and i think that's such a shame it's such a horrible thing to do when you're trying so hard to make that muscle and then you diet it down you lose the muscle because you want to make the weight cap you want to do this division and honestly neil curry doesn't really have a classic physique not really i mean he has a small waist but that's about it only it only small waist everything else does not look classic he definitely does look more like a bodybuilder and this is the reason why he didn't place well at the mr olympia this year he did win that new york pro but that was like one on conditioning it really wasn't one on shape and structure it is a like let's say okay classic physique structure but he is not super super aesthetic super classic if you ask me so i think he's meant to do bodybuilding his body is meant to do bodybuilding it's still gonna take him some time to grow enough muscle to be competitive in bodybuilding but i'm curious I, i'm really excited to see that happen in the next couple of years anyways guys that's gonna do it for this video if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up and for more videos like this subscribe to my channel guys thank you so much for watching all the best and bye bye